It's time for Focus Friday, y'all. Let's focus in on a fall wreath for the front door. I can't wait to get started. Fall is my favorite season, y'all. And don't tune out because I'm using Deco Mesh, guys. I promise you, you can make this one. I think the best way to start any new season is to start with your front door to welcome your friends and family. For this project, I'm going to be using a 14-inch wreath form that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using some 21-inch mesh. I think this came from Hobby Lobby. Some mesh tubing from the Dollar Tree. This 4 by 6 pumpkin sign that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some metal pumpkins from the Dollar General. And lots and lots of good quality Chanel stems. To really give our wreath a lot of punch, we're going to be using some beautiful ribbon. The first ribbon with the green trucks came from craftoutlet.com. The orange ribbon was on clearance at Walmart. And these last two ribbons came from the Dollar Tree. And of course, you're going to need your wire cutters and your hot glue gun. To save money, we're going to be setting up our own wreath form. I'm going to come in, first of all, with a chenille stem right in the middle of one of our sections on the inner two wires. And then we'll just snug that down two hard turns. There are six individual sections on this wreath form, so we are going to be placing six in this same exact manner. You want to snug it down tightly and twist it a couple of times. And now that you have seen that at normal speed for a couple of times, I'm going to speed up this process because we're just going to repeat our way around until we get all six complete. And by the way, if they start to slide around, just put a little hot glue on the back and those chenille stems will stay tightly in place. Now, because this is a teaching video, I'm going to be using two different colors of chenille stems so that you can easily tell what I'm doing on the front set of our bars that are on the wreath form and the back set. And now we're going to be placing a chenille stem on the outer two rings underneath them and in between the first chenille stem we placed and our support bar. On this outer set of chenille stems, we're going to be placing two in each section. You can see that I have placed the first one. Now I'm placing the second one. And I have placed them as equally as I can in between that gold chenille stem and that spacer bar. Now let's repeat this process for the next section. I want to show you in a little bit faster time, but not too fast because this is for teaching purposes. So I'm going to place in the next two, keep those snug, keep them evenly placed. And if they move around, you can always add glue onto the back of your wreath form. And now we'll just repeat this process, move our way around the wreath form for a total of 12 chenille stems on this outer set of rings. And that will give us a total of 18 chenille stems on the wreath form. Not all mesh is created equal and some of it can be quite thin. So we're going to compensate for that as we place this mesh onto our wreath form. So you want to come in about six inches from the edge and then you just start pleating it from the center and working your fingers back and forth to keep it as even as possible. And when you have lines like this particular mesh, it does make it easier. I'm of course going to analyze mine and make sure I have it pretty even in my hand before I take out a zip tie and move over towards my wreath form to place it down. I'm going to be using the poof method for this wreath and the first thing I want to do is attach our mesh as close to one of the gold chenille stems as possible on that inner two rings. I'm going to take my zip tie underneath and I place it across one of those black bars and secure it down as close as possible to that gold chenille stem. I don't place mine into an initial chenille stem because that adds for a lot of bulk when you're adding a lot of items later. And once we've snugged that down, I'm going to come over with my wire cutters, cut off the excess, and then I'll push the tab part to the side or the back so that it doesn't interfere with my wreath. And you can certainly go ahead and trim up that end of mesh. I don't know why I didn't do that right then, but you can do that before you start your poofs. But I'm using my mat and I'm going to measure out 10 inches and we're going to be doing 10 inch poofs around the wreath. And once we have our 10 inch poof, we're going to go over to the next set of chenille stems and we're going to snug it down really tightly. And you also want to fluff your poof each time as you go. 
Let me show you that again in real time before we really speed things up. We're doing a 10 inch poof. We're going to measure first of all on our cutting mat and then we'll bring it over to the wreath form and snug it down with a couple of hard twists and fluffing everything as we go. And now if you've taken your time and put in these first couple of poofs, you're already an expert. So we can speed up the process and we're going around till we finish all six poofs on this inner set of chenille stems. Don't get frustrated with a wreath. Take breaks if you need to, but making a wreath, I promise you, is so much fun. And here you can see I actually saw that, hey, you didn't trim the end of that before. So I poked it down through the wreath form. You could go in and attach it with a zip tie, but I am going to go ahead and cut mine off since I've already used a zip tie at the beginning. And this is where I'm placing on poof number six around the wreath form. And we're almost ready to drop down to that second set of chenille stems on those outer two rings. So now that we have finished the inner set, let's start on that outer set. I'm going to take another zip tie. I'm going to pull my mesh down to the closest set of chenille stems, just dropping down, going in the direction that I've already been working. And I'll place a zip tie again around one of the rings, snug it down tightly to hold our mesh in place. And I didn't go into that set of orange chenille stems first. And of course, we're going to pull that tight, cut off the excess with our wire cutters, and we'll twist that towards the back. And at this point, we're going to start repeating what we did on the inner set of chenille stems. We're going to measure across our cutting mat, 10 inch poofs, and then we'll move over to our wreath form, snug that down really tightly. A couple of twists will be enough, and then move on to the next set of chenille stems after we fluff everything we've done. At this point, I'm going to speed up the process considerably, but you're just repeating the same thing that you've done. And notice this mesh is a little thin, but we're going to compensate for that and you won't even notice in the end. We will make sure that we cover all of this wire wreath form. And I would like to say that there are lots of ways to set up a wreath form. This is only one. And now making the last poof here, and I did want to show you and slow it down just a little bit because it does look quite full. I was really worried about how thin this mesh looked, but I am going to show you a trick to compensate if your mesh looks a little too thin and you're seeing your wreath form through those bars. This is also a good trick for using up most of your mesh because you're really not going to need it for another project. So measure off 10 inch poofs on your mat once again. And what I'm going to do is go back up into our gold set of chenille stems, the, the inner chenille stems, and I'm just going to snug down another poof. And I'm going to make sure that poof falls between the first and second set of poofs. And of course, I'm going to fluff mine as I go. Let me show you that again, doing the second one. Again, we're going to do six of these because I'm going to be placing them right back in our gold set of chenille stems on the inner two rings. And that should give us a nice full wreath. We should not see any of that wreath form through the mesh. And now that I have placed on all of the mesh poofs, what we need to do next is just cut off our deco mesh. I'm going to pull it out about six inches or so and just cut it with my scissors. Then I'll just take my tail, poke it down through the wreath form and pull it towards the back. And then while I have it here on the back, I'm going to pull it closest to one of those support bars or spacer bars or whatever you would like to call them. I usually call them support bars. And I'll take another zip tie, place it around the corner there so we have extra support and snug down our zip ties. And of course, we're going to use our wire cutters and cut off the excess zip tie and then come in with our scissors and trim up any mesh on the back so that it doesn't stick out too far. And now the deco mesh is on and you can tell that it has made a beautiful fall wreath so far. I decided I wasn't going to cut off the hanger on this sign. I'm just going to pull it down towards the back and take my heavy duty stapler and staple it down. You could certainly cut it off if you prefer, but just make sure if you do use a stapler that they don't come through the front. 
I'm going to be stapling chenille stems on the right and left side of this sign. It's not a very big sign. It's only about five and a half by six and a half or something like that. I think I said it wrong earlier, but I fold my chenille stems in half and I leave kind of a little bump and just come in with that heavy duty stapler and one staple is all it takes. And then you also probably want to secure it with hot glue on top of that. In order to make it easy to cut the ribbons to go on to the wreath form, I'm going to be using a 12 inch ribbon tail board. I made this one myself. I just bought a piece of board at Hobby Lobby and I think I cut it off. I painted it so it would be smooth and the ribbon would slide around easily. And I decorated it because you know I'm a pink girl. Here I am folding the last two that I need around the board to show you how you use one. And you pull it to the end, you're going to cut off at the end there, and then we're going to make another cut on the other side where the fold is. You can fold it around as many times as you need to. The reason I didn't do that for this board, and I wanted to show you that you can cut your ribbons by just measuring them on your table, measuring them with a ruler, but I had to be really careful with this roll because it came from the Dollar Tree and it only has nine feet and I needed nine pieces of 12 inch ribbon. And you can see that I only had a tiny bit left. Then for all of our pieces of ribbon that we're going to be placing into the wreath, I'm starting out with this nine. I'm going to fold them in half right sides together. Then you want to fold in half the ends of the ribbon tails and cut from the fold towards the wire at a diagonal. And there you have dovetailed ends of all your pieces. And you want to continue to do this for all four sets of ribbon. We're going to cut nine pieces of all four ribbons and we're also going to fold them in half and dovetail all of the ends. And here I have all four sets ready to go, nine pieces each. Now that we have those together, then we have to pair them up. I'm going to pair this green with this plaid, and I'm going to pinch them in the center, placing them on an X. And that's how I'm going to be placing them into the wreath form. And for the next set, I'm going to put together our truck ribbon and our bright orange. And I'll do the same thing, place it at an X and pinch that in the middle. We're just going to be alternating one set and then the other set onto our wreath. I'm going to start first of all on the inner set of chenille stems and I'm going to be placing them, as I said, every other one. I'm starting with the truck and the orange ribbon, making sure my trucks are faced outward and going in the same direction. And I'm going to snug those down using the same chenille stems. And so we will have three of these on this inner set of chenille stems. Then we'll start on the outer set of the chenille stems with the very same ribbons doing the same procedure. We're also going every other one. It doesn't really matter where you start because of the way I put on the chenille stems, but you do want to go in every other one. And so you will have six on this outer set. And now that we have finished the first set, let's take the next two ribbons, place them one on top of the other, pinch in the middle, and we'll fill in all of those empty spots on the inner ring and also the outer ring of our chenille stems. This is making for a very layered, a very full, and very beautiful wreath. Wreaths are all about layering in textures and color, and it is just an explosion of beauty on your front door. And one helpful note that I forgot to mention is that you can fluff these ribbons as you go, um, give them a really good tug underneath, and that will give you that lift on each set of ribbon tails. Sometimes when you buy ribbon from the Dollar Tree, it can be a little short or it can have a flaw in it like this green ribbon did. So I was one piece short of making nine, but that's okay. I'm going to cover it up because that's where I will be placing my sign and no one's even going to know. I'm going to use those chenille stems on the back of our sign to attach it to the wreath form. You want to work those chenille stems down through your mesh. I was lucky there's a crossbar right where I left off um, that one piece of green ribbon. So it's real easy to kind of stick those down through there and attach it to that crossbar. And you want that sign to kind of float on top of the wreath. You don't want to shove it down into the wreath and flatten everything out. 
And then of course, I'm going to turn it over onto the back, twist it in tightly, exactly the way I want it. I did flip it over. Make sure it's exactly in place before I secure that chenille stem with hot glue. To give another added layer, I cut this deco mesh tubing into 20 inch pieces and I just pull them in my hand, find the center, and then form a simple shoelace type bow by pushing up in the middle. And I'm going to attach that in all of the places where we have the green and the plaid ribbon. I'm just going to use the same chenille stems once again and we still have plenty of length to do that. I'm going to place two of those metal pumpkins I showed you earlier on the back of this wreath. I have some cable tie mounts on the back of each of them, and you just take a chenille stem, place it through those holes, twist it down, and then twist it down into your wreath. Again, you want it to sort of float on top just like your sign did so that it doesn't go too far down into the wreath. And the only thing left to do is to finish off our chenille stems. I'm going to take a pencil or a pen and I'm going to twist them around into the wreath form and just sort of let them become part of the wreath or part of the decoration. If they're too long, just simply cut them off. It's just personal preference for how you place your particular wreath. And finally, our finished project with all of the elements added in. Get ready for the ultimate Christmas crafting experience. Join Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs, Brandy from Making It My Own DIY, Kendra from Late Night Creations, and Kay and Trish from Crafting Cousins for Christmas Crafting Live. Mark your calendars for Saturday, September 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern when we will be going live for the ultimate Christmas crafting party, creating magical Christmas kits right along beside you. We will have two things, Santa and Nativity, and you can choose a charming shelf sitter, a festive wood round sign, or go all out with a bundle, which includes the shelf sitter, the wood round sign, and a bonus ornament. Purchase your kit now by clicking the link below. Deadline to order kits is Monday, September 2nd to ensure we can get yours to you in time for the party. Make it a big party by inviting your friends over for a night of crafting, food, drinks, and endless fun. Let's make this Christmas unforgettable, one craft at a time. Christmas Crafting Live, Saturday, September 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss the Merry Madness. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all!